time for this week's episode of the Tech Informist Podcast. Let's begin. I'm Kevin. I'm Brad. On this episode, we discuss Microsoft build thoughts. Harman Kardon's Cortana speaker revealed. Amazon has yet another Echo device on the way. Qualcomm unveils new Snapdragon processors. Waze now lets you record your own turn-by-turn directions. Welcome back, folks. This is episode 176 of the Tech Informist podcast. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, how are things going with you, sir? You, Your career change is like really happening now. Your last day at CarStar was yesterday. As we record. Yes. And your first day of Microsoft is coming up next week on Monday. Yes, it is. It's scary. It's exciting. It's scary. <laughs> A little bit of both, a little bit of everything, as to be expected. Nine years at one location, one industry, and now switching to something completely different. I mean, I started there at the age of 20. I I couldn't even drink legally yet. And now I'm 29, and I no longer work there. And now you're going to be working with the public, which is something a little bit different for you. Uh, Ish. I mean, I have done... You know, I've worked with the public here and there from working at just CarStar. Occasionally there will be a a customer that will approach me in the back lot or something. And, I I mean, I worked with solely the public when I was working at a car dealership. And we would bring the car up to the customer for the final, like, walkthrough. So it's not a new thing per se, but it definitely need to stretch my – Talking muscles. Yeah, because, I mean, now it's going to be, like, really professional, not really a hard-hitting sales approach that you're going to be doing, but you're going to be helping advise people make technology decisions. Oh, I'm good at that. And getting people to (laughs) part with their money and get them what they need because everybody's needs and wants with computers and Mm -hmm. everything is so different. Vastly different. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, we even sell Android phones now at the store. Well, specifically one, the S8, mm-hmm. which is AT&T only. But there's new products coming out, including things that we're going to have in the show notes and obviously the Surface laptop that we talked about last week. Right. I have to think about that every time I say it because I want to say book. It can be a little bit confusing because you've got the Surface, the Surface Pro, the Surface Book, the Surface Laptop, the Surface Studio. I'm sure I'm missing out some kind of Surface. mm we don't have the Surface box yet. <laughs> yeah, and if you're listening in the future and the Surface phone of some sorts happened, we don't know about it yet. Correct. Because that was not shown off at Build. There was very little mention about Windows Mobile slash Windows Phone. But they did mention it. It was mentioned. But obviously it seems, based on what we did see during the some of the stuff with Build, now just had the chance to watch some things briefly because... Uh, Life is busy in this world that I live in, so I didn't get a chance to watch the full build keynotes. But I only caught the very beginning of day one and two, so they definitely talked a little bit about Cortana on day one. Day one was mostly in um, developer stuff anyway. Day two is really more what we're going to focus on because that's more consumer-focused, and, well, that's more exciting to me on it anyway. Exactly. It's kind of what the show's more about. It's just for general consumer information and that's kind of what we like to do so the fall creators update is better known as redstone 3 to most of us is it's official now that's what they're going to call it fall creators update and well i guess that comes out in the fall here in the u.s and if you're in australia i guess it would be the spring creators update so yeah right the complete like mirror opposite on seasons there seems to be, you know, a decent amount of things coming to Windows, and some of it's kind of exciting. There was a video program that I don't remember the name of off the top of my head. You're talking about the Windows Story Remix? That's where it. Where you can do all that really fancy editing, and as they showed off during the presentation, taking that soccer ball and turning it into a fireball, and you anchor it so you're not pinning it. It's called anchoring. And then the girl comes up, kicks it. 
It turns into this flaming ball. It goes flying into the goal because it's anchored to the item in the video. So it tracks and stays with it. And they also showed off, you know, just drawing a caption on the screen and anchoring it to the one player and she plays the video and the text just completely follows her down the screen. You're like, oh my God, that's it's really cool. It's pretty amazing. I mean, we use video editing tools, but as simple as that one is. Yes. And it works so well for being as simple as it is. I see a lot of people using this. Getting very creative with video content that'll be you'll be seeing this all over social media, I would imagine. I mean everyone will have it. You won't need a super beefed up computer to run this. I mean you'll need a what, an I five maybe. Right. At at you know, I guess least. Yeah, because this isn't like heavy duty video editing. This is just hey, we're just adding some little things to it and on the way it's you go. Um, you know, there's even a, a store for all the 3D rendered AR things that you can add in and you can pick apart dirt, certain things Pieces. that are in yeah, the store. Yeah, like, like they within the this, scene. Yeah, within the scene, they said that every piece is its own individual piece. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, that's really, it was really fantastic. So to if see. you wanted a specific thing in that scene, you could go to it and pick it apart and find that thing to add into your video. I mean, uh, this is awesome. This is <laughs> – I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that maybe in a future Final Cut Pro update that there might be some kind of integration similar to this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it kind of makes me want to just start playing around with things in my Windows partition to see what I could do with – with this and once this does roll out and we get our hands on it yeah uh, again apple has always been known to have those kind of base apps from them and they mm -hmm. work pretty well and a lot of people use them windows has never really sat in that camp mm -mm. almost ever i mean and when they did no one cared for a while mm -hmm. it seems like they're really putting their weight behind those stock apps and they're even making it to where developers can take a lot of their ideas and incorporate it into their apps too to grow the platform even more. Right. And that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it's what it boils down to is the developers need to be creative and you know, share some of their ideas and do different things to help push the platforms forward. And it seems to be one of the things that Microsoft is really trying to improve on is their relationship with developers and making more people feel like they're included and their voices matter. I think with the, you know, the insider program that kind of got things off to a really good start where people's voices could kind of be heard. How they mm -hmm. helped shape you know, what windows 10 is today. Granted, they're not going to be able to listen to everybody's opinions, no matter how good your suggestion is. They might right. not always do it, but it might not always fit with the master plan. Right, and might not be something that they re integrate quickly or not. No matter. Again, we go back to placeholders from Windows 8. Yeah. It's taken a long time to get anything to resemble placeholders. And it appears that that's kind of happening right now. Yeah, I can't remember what the name of it was, but it's One popped One Drive up. Files on Demand, I believe. It's kind yes, of a long believe, string. Yeah, so that kind of came through during Joe Belfiore's portion of the presentation and you know you look on a right clicks and instead of saying make available offline or whatever it, the the terminology has kind of changed but mm. it's yeah. essentially the same yeah though. like make always available something like that and like to me that's placeholders that's getting it back to where once i'm syncing up with my OneDrive or whatever how it used to be if it wasn't stored on there you had your placeholder where you could still see it Mm -hmm. And you're not connected to internet, Wi-Fi, for example, when you're flying on a plane and you want to get to work on that document. Right-click on it, make, always make, make available offline or always make available, and then you can still work on that when you might not have Wi-Fi access. Right. I... So for the for so long we've been waiting for this, mm -hmm. and now I wonder how many people care still. I don't know. I I, I know. am 
a little excited, but at the same time... Not like I would have been a year or two ago. Right, exactly. It's not the same level of excitement. I am glad that they finally did add it, though. So I, yeah. that being said, you know. I completely agree. They also introduced something called Timeline, which I'm, I'm going to roughly try to explain. But essentially, you could have two different computers be working on, uh, let's say, a PowerPoint document like they had in the video. And jump over to a different computer who does not have the documents on it at all whatsoever, brand new computer, let's say, Mm -hmm. and pick right back up where you left off because it's all in the cloud. So pretty simple concept, but one that's maybe not executed as well as it could be in a lot of instances. But, I mean, that that could be really useful for a lot of people. I know I will probably use it, you know, just even working in the Microsoft Store, you know, that would be an easy thing to show off. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was also another thing that I was a little more interested in, in rather than timelines, and that was the cloud-based clipboard. So you could essentially copy and paste something from your computer, go to your phone. doesn't matter if it's a Windows phone, iOS, Android. What really seems to matter currently is that you have the Swift keyboard. You open the little hamburger menu, and you paste whatever it is that you copied from your Windows device. That's good. Windows plays nice with all now. It's kind of where they made a point to make sure that people understood that, yeah, our true Windows phone slash Windows mobile platform, you know, we're still working on Windows 10 for mobile, but it's just not their own personal devices, their own, like, Lumias. I wouldn't expect to see anything soon. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't either. It does not seem to be that way. They just want to make sure that Windows runs well on pretty much any device, whether Mm -hmm. it's theirs or whether it's from another company. Yeah, I think they're more concerned about, like you said, you know, getting Windows to play nicely with other platforms because the point is no longer to try to break Com- into that. Right, and compete, and hey, we're going to go from 3% and really chip away at that other 97% between the other two. Yeah, uh-huh. that ain't happening anymore. No. At least not in its current form, it's not. Correct. The kind of bombshell that I absolutely would never expect in a million years mm-hmm. actually happened, and that is iTunes is coming to the Windows Store, yes. if you can believe it or not. Now, why is this a big deal? Oh, because it's one of the two most used apps probably in existence of the PC. And, you know, obviously we're still missing Chrome from the Windows Store. I don't know if that will ever happen. But we have half of the puzzle, and that's kind of big for Windows, you know, being as they, in quotations, don't have apps. That's mostly true, but with Windows 10 S coming up, this is a very big deal. Yeah, it's, it obviously for people that are going to be using Surface laptops or any other device that sells with Windows 10 S installed, unless you upgrade to Windows 10 Pro... You can only install things that are in the store. Mm -hmm. If iTunes wasn't in the store, there would have been kind of a backlash from a lot of people that use Windows computers and iPhones and iTunes for their music and stuff like that to not have iTunes available in that Windows store. So it makes complete sense why iTunes is going there. I just still can't believe they actually did it. Yeah, I know. (laughs) There will be an Apple product in the Windows store. It makes me wonder if Steve Jobs was still alive and still in charge. If that would happen. If that would have happened, just because... Uh, hard to say. Obviously, if it would have been Jobs and Balmer still in charge of each company, chances are pretty slim because it seemed yeah. like they kind of butted heads a lot. Yeah, it's such... Various reasons. I mean, to even go down that rabbit hole, there's so many variables. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's hard to... It's really hard to think of it that way. But, I mean, here's the hoping that more apps do show up because of Windows 10 S. I'm a little surprised that this happened, as you can tell. But who knows? Maybe they did something right, and this might actually spur some more app development. Because really all they have to do is package their app, you know, in its current executable state. Right, and just package it up and put it in the store, essentially. They don't have to add all the cool 
things that you could normally do with normal UWP apps. But it also contains those apps and keeps your computer safe. I mean, I will download iTunes from the Windows Store just to keep it in its own little container. Yeah, it will not affect anything else. And if you uninstall the app, it's not going to leave little remnants. It's going to make that kind of stuff so much better. Well, not only that, but you got to figure it's not going to be doing weird processes in the background and you know zapping your ability to open apps and use your other processes elsewhere. Yeah, so. you know, back in the quote unquote day, iTunes was kind of a resource hog, yeah. especially on Windows. Kinda. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nowadays I think it's a lot more streamlined and a little bit better, just than the obvious iterations. But yeah, it used to be horrible trying to open that up on some systems. I'm like, oh my god, I got to open up iTunes. Mm-hmm. And there we go. They also did talk uh, quite a bit about mixed reality, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in that, kind of their biggest product that they were pushing forward is Acer's new mixed reality headset, which I think standalone is $299, Right. but with the new Windows mixed reality controllers, I don't remember exactly what they call them. I think that's just it. It is called Windows mixed reality controllers. And I, I guess that those are somewhere around the $100 mark for both of those. So you, in a bundle that will be later this year, closer to holiday, it's going to be a three ninety nine bundle, right. which is actually, as of right now, one of the cheapest bundles you can get for that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. The next step would be, I guess, PSVR. Price-wise, yeah. Price-wise. If, you know, if you had to start from scratch, you had to buy the camera, the controllers, it'd be like in the 500s. Then you go Oculus, which is in the six hundreds. Then you go yeah, Oculus Vive. And Vive is like six, seven hundred, eight hundred a piece. Yeah. And then you still got to get the additional equipment to, to run do a lot those of this things, stuff. right? So whereas this, I don't feel that you would be anchored to such high end hardware with these lower end headsets, right? I could be wrong. And developers can order these now to start getting applications and experience is ready for that holiday launch yeah and that's acer and hp for the uh the things that you can order now mm-hmm. let's see so oculus rift is six hundred dollars and that includes a headset touch controllers xbox gamepad and two sensors the htc vive retails for 800 which comes with a headset motion controllers and sensors mm-hmm. and those of course do need computers to run as well so you got to factor in that cost if your current computer isn't up to par with some of the requirements for some of these virtual reality games and experiences. So overall, what are your thoughts of this year's build? I mean, again, I've just seen the highlights and stuff like that, but it's definitely intriguing. You know, seeing some of the stuff that they showed off, I can definitely see why I would want to buy in on some of this technology and stuff that they got coming and, They've definitely come a long way from, you know, the Microsoft of three, four, five years ago. Oh, yeah. When started getting involved with creating STL Tech Talk and coming up to some of the first Windows Phone meetup groups here in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. The technology has come a long way. It's in changed just that a five lot. Years, yeah. yeah, it's changed a lot. That it's really impressive to, to see that, yeah, they're going to continue. They're more than just a software company. Yeah. Now there's a lot of things that go with it, like real OEM, their own hardware. It's good, it's good to see because you don't want one company to just run away with everything. And you want companies to kind of push each other and inspire other companies to come up with their own things, with their own creative minds that can help build and improve upon what Microsoft or Apple is, is doing. So it's good to see. I wonder if some of the apps that are in the stores now, i.e., iOS and Spotify that are coming to the store very, very soon, Mm -hmm. if not already there. I wonder if that will create a domino effect for some of their competitors. I would hope. I mean, to have that on Windows S is a pretty big deal because that would really push us in the direction of Windows in, in some sense of what Windows RT was supposed to be. They never fully realized that because, well... There was no such thing as an app store before that. Yeah. So yeah, 
It was definitely the cart came well before the horse in that aspect. <laughs> yeah. It's like, man, I got this great little portable tablet that I can do a lot of – oh, I can't really do a lot of things on it because – I can surf the web. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch videos. <laughs> yeah, because there's just not – the apps weren't there. And obviously still not all the apps that everybody would like to have on these platforms are available. But and they're making strides. Whenever I open up Windows 10 on my Mac – Spotify in like installs every time, or whenever I click to open it, mm. that's down at the t- uh, taskbar. So it's running processes in the background that you, especially well, no, on startup. It's, it's not that. It's like whenever I start it up and then I go and I go to open Spotify because I leave it pinned down to my taskbar. It it says it's installed. I'm like, why would you still be installing again every time that I open this? So I mm. think by putting it in there, it will take care of just any of those little funky little yeah. quirks that some companies do. And like you mentioned earlier, make it hopefully easier to just get rid of things when mm-hmm. you need to. Yeah, because I hate uninstalling a program because you got a lazy developer that don't want to really build a good uninstaller. And then you go back in a few days later looking through your system folders and you're like, why is that still there? I deleted you. I right. installed your program. I uh-huh. don't need to still see your company's name or whatever the name of the program was in a folder. Like, just go. I don't want you. <laughs> the reason why I deleted you. So I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see what Microsoft comes up with next. Yeah. So around here, we are getting more and more into music. Myself, personally, I listen to more music now than I have in the last couple of years for sure but Harmon Carden has now got a Cortana speaker on the way invoke as it is called invoke and what is interesting is about it is it's kind of more geared towards the Amazon Echo Google Home kind of scene mm-hmm. uh, we have two Harmon Carden speakers at home they are fantastic and I would highly recommend them to anyone who would want a just nice, pretty at-home speaker. But with this, having Cortana integrated kind of gives you the ability to do more and probably even more than what my Google Home can do right now because there's a lot of things that I say. It's like, oh, I can't do that right now. Or that feature's not available uh, uh, right now. I'm like, are you kidding me? Then why are you here? Because it's free. <laughs> but uh, – and I – it's nice that I get to learn things about the competition. So when I go to maybe sell a Harman Kardon speaker from, that has Cortana on it, I can be like, it can do this, this, and this, and this, whereas the Google Home can't do any of those things. Right. For example, with this new Invoke speaker, you will be able to make calls on Skype via you know your address book. That's kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. Amazon is working towards something similar to that, which I think we'll talk about next. Yes, yes. Google doesn't have anything like that incorporated into their speaker currently. I'm sure they could with the – what is it? Duo? Duo and Allo. I know Duo's getting the ability to where you can make just standard phone calls through the app now, I believe. So if they could kind of couple that onto the speaker apps, I guess that could work. But I haven't really heard a peep about that yet i don't think google's problem is they like to have multiple apps that pretty much do the same thing (laughs) yeah that's their biggest problem messaging and all that stuff like you know you really just google is a bunch of different apps that do the same thing whereas microsoft is a bunch of same apps that do the same thing (laughs) because we've got like 10 different versions of skype and you know yeah i'm gonna get in yeah we'll, we'll leave that alone so i will say that this speaker will probably hit the price points similar to Amazon and Google. The reason I say that is because it looks cheaper than our speakers at home. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a demeaning way. I mean that in a they took time to make the components hit a certain price point while yet making it a viable option other than the other two. Mm Mm-hmm. I I think it's also interesting that Microsoft didn't build their own. They partnered with somebody. That's kind of a reoccurring theme we're seeing. They're doing more of the partner thing instead of just building their own. Well, they just didn't want to confuse you with releasing the Surface speaker. (laughs) Oof. No. (laughs) 
which that's a, I mean, that's pretty much what they probably would have called it. It's the Surface speaker. But it'd have to have a touchscreen being Surface. Right. That's true. But no, I think this thing looks pretty nice. I don't know if these are like actual product images or yes, just like from renders. their web from Harman Kardon's website. They're actual, so they're black and silver from yeah. what we have seen so far. Two different colored units, and it looks very much just like an Amazon Echo to me. It's kind of narrow at the top uh, cylinder, and then it kind of gets a little bit wider towards the base, mm-hmm. which I like because I look at the Echoes and I think. If somebody just kind of like bumps that, or are they going to like knock it over or something? And granted, it's usually going to be placed somewhere people aren't like setting stuff down or interacting with it physically. Well, and the Google Home is much shorter than the Amazon Echo. Oh, well, yeah, the Home is real short compared so to the So you don't really have to worry about that top heavy right. thing being, you know, a thing. Right. But, you know, with the bigger ones, hopefully that, like you said, that base that kind of gets gradually bigger towards the bottom. It's not. It's not like a bowling pin or something. It doesn't just go skinny and then wide at the bottom or something. But, right. Yeah. So for our listeners that are outside of the United States, I've got some bad news that this has been announced that it will be U.S. only and will support Windows 10, Android, and iOS. Price is still unknown, but there is an announcement page on Harman Kardon's website. So you can go check it out for yourself if you would like. And we'll have it in the show notes, of course. Yeah. And it's expected to ship with the release of Redstone 3, which we just got done talking about, which is supposed to arrive this fall. Which could be anywhere between late August to, what, no, November or something? Into or no, December. sorry, late into September December. into December. early December. Just before Christmas. Yeah. Which is so weird to, th- to always think that, you know, winter doesn't begin until like four days before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. It's what it is. I didn't create. I didn't create this weird-ass calendar that we use. No, no, no. Sure did not. But no, I'm looking forward to seeing this and seeing how it sounds as a, compared to mm-hmm. the Google Home and the Echoes because I really think the Echo sounds good. Have you listened to a lot of music or anything with your Google Home? I did listen to the radio, and we did listen to a little music It. Actually, for as small as it is, it sounds pretty good. Good. Yeah. You have to check that out sometime. I think. I, I think, just because of the size, I like the home. But from what I know and have yeah. used of the Echo, I like the Echo. This is really nice. Yeah, that seems to be a reoccurring theme amongst people. They seem to prefer the Echo and what its capabilities are currently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of the Echo, Amazon has a new touchscreen Echo that is up for pre-order now for $229. Who's this for? I'm kind of a little confused because I have a phone that already does this. And if I can download an Alexa app on my phone, why do I need this? Well, okay. So we'll get into this a little bit. It's called the Echo Show, and it's a touchscreen-enabled Echo. Again, retailing for two twenty nine. It's going to be available on June the twenty eighth. You look at it, and it looks like the front page of a Windows phone. It does. <laughs> it does kind of. It looks like something you would see back in those kind of futuristic movies. The little thing that sits on somebody's yeah. desk. It's got a nice little screen. Obviously, it's going to have a camera, touchscreen speaker at the bottom. It's just like a big square, which, if you look at it sideways, is kind of like a wedge. Yeah, it's not exactly what I would say appealing to the eye, but I guess it gets the job done. Yeah. Especially for 229 bucks. True. I'm trying to determine just how big the display is on this. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like it would be all that big. Yeah, it doesn't really give us any specs either. No. But either way, I think it kind of looks nice, but I'm like you. Is it something that I'm really going to to do but then again if you're somebody with a disability Mm. to where you can't really hold a phone or something like that yeah that's very true i think something like this would actually work out very well i again i don't feel i'm the target market for this the demographic right but i do believe there are use cases for all these different devices that are coming out with no matter how much we don't quote unquote get 
what they're doing, like with that look and well, stuff like that we talked about recently? Maybe this is sort of the next step. You know, maybe Cortana gets integrated into my mirror next or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. A smart mirror. The Internet of Things, you know. Obviously. Right. I mean, there's the possibilities are endless, as they say. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, maybe this is the next step. Maybe, I mean, we're such visual creatures. Maybe it, we want to see what they're talking about. So I don't know. Could be. I mean, it's kind of nice that if this is just sitting on your nightstand as kind of like your alarm clock or something like that. Yeah. Like, hey, Alexa, you know, wake me up at 6.45 in the morning. Right. And when the alarm clock goes off, you roll over, you say, Alexa, okay, Alexa, I'm up or something like that. Yeah, so I don't know what. Off. Yeah, I don't know what that would be. And then you just go, Alexa, show me what's on my calendar today, and it just gives you a complete rundown of what what's on your calendar, so you know. Alexa, wake me back up at eight, because <laughs> you don't have to be at a meeting until ten. That so was you, kind of me this morning. Yeah, woke up nine ish, and you're like, oh, I have a guest coming in at ten. Oh, hey, we didn't start recording yet. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it it happens. So it does. We'll see. I, maybe this thing is actually going to be a, a big seller and they'll be able to really make this worthwhile for people. Well, and it sort of makes sense with this next little bit of that news with the Amazon unveils free calling and messaging via Alexa, Alexa calling. Call. The whole <laughs> name is Alexa calling. Yeah. So uh, essentially you can call somebody who either has the Alexa app or a speaker and talk to them back and forth or leave them a essentially a voice message. Mm-hmm. So the Echo Show is a 7-inch touchscreen, just by the way. Just found that out. All right, good. And one interesting calling feature that Amazon is going to be including with the Echo Show is called, quote-unquote, drop-in, which you can have approved people like your closest family, friends, people that you kind of expect to communicate with on a fairly regular basis they'll instantly be able to connect with you via a video chat similar to google duo's knock knock where it's like an instant kind of thing instead of where you have to eh, i don't really want to talk to this person so you kind of Hmm. deny it or decline it it'll be interesting you know that kind of reminds me of those silly um sci-fi based videos where it's the home of the future Mm -hmm. you know and then you know everyone's talking to their devices and he's like oh you know computer get mom on the phone or hey computer you know something to mom and mom's just automatically right there like oh hey honey what do you need and you start talking to her and then she just just goes away as fast as she you know came in and it's yeah. almost like she's in the other room. It's like Jetsons, Back to the Future 2, yeah. whatever Marty McFly calls needles. I love that sci-fi kind of optimistic look towards the future where we didn't quite get it right, but it's still a kind of cheesy 80s sci-fi. Like like you said, you know, Back to the Future or Jetsons or, or even if you're a Disney fan um, – the Tomorrowland in Disney World. I love that stuff. Right. It was always nice. Do you remember those, like the Tom and Jerry company that did Tom and Jerry? They would have, you know, you had droopy cartoons, and then there would also be the Home of Tomorrow. Kind yeah. Of those cartoons were yep. the Car of Tomorrow and things like that. So I always liked those. Me too. It was, what was it, Tex Avery or whatever. Mm-hmm. Those were always really good. So we'll... Amazon succeed this time because, you know, they had the Fire Phone, which bombed. <laughs> it was kind of a, a bad Can you imagine thing. if that would have had Alexa in it? If the Fire that, Phone? If that might have taken off faster. It might have. I, no telling. Just Another like, horse before the carriage kind of thing. Again, yeah, you keep throwing a bunch of things out there, but you learn and you get the feedback from why people didn't want the Fire Phone. Right. And you'd be like, okay, so we should have implemented ABC instead of XYZ and Mm -hmm. probably would have been a little bit successful. So let's regroup and let's design a product around XYZ because that's what people apparently wanted. Now XYZ is the echo line and all these other little things with Alexa and all that. Maybe that's what they – business is tough, especially in the tech business when you're trying to introduce 
new ways to communicate and interact with people and the internet and society and all this stuff. It's tough to pick what's going to be a, a winner. You don't yeah. know. All sounds great to you. All sounds great to your family and friends. You mm-hmm. can get investors on board, but is that really what the general population that's going to help make it a success? Really, what they want? Don't know until you put it out there. Yeah. And Amazon just keeps throwing something out there every every week, something different. See if it'll stick. Yeah. So Qualcomm just not good enough to just rest on their laurels have announced their upcoming Snapdragon 630 and 660 platforms which are going to be more focused on power consumption to help with all day battery for those slightly mid range devices that are not typically what we talk about on the show because obviously the sexy phones to talk about are the high end flagships Uh whether it's but, I mean, there is something to say, and I was even talking to my um, father about this just this past week, how, you know, he still has, like, a Samsung S4 or something. Mm-hmm. And the reason he hasn't changed is because it's paid off, and it still works. So why get a new phone? And I totally get that. I can't do that, but I get it. Mm-hmm. Whereas maybe he could get a brand-new phone being two, 300 bucks, and have one of these 630 or 660s in it and still be able to deliver – LTE speeds up to 600 megahertz, Bluetooth 5.0, Quick Charge 4.0, you know, um, with USB-C and USB 3.1. It can go either way to make the phone cheaper. But, I mean, all of these great features that are in our flagships from last year are sort of trickling down now. I mean, that's sort of how tech works. Um, Us high-end people buy the high-end st- – high-end people. Us uh, tech enthusiasts buy the high-end gear, and then those of us who don't want to spend the money on that just kind of wait for that middle range to get better. Yeah, you take the – we'll just use the Snapdragon 820, for example. As years go by, you kind of take a lot of that technology, you improve upon it, make it a little bit more optimized. Same performance – but then you just kind of like rebrand it in that mid-level design. Mm -hmm. And then you you still get a lot of the the good stuff out of it to help make the devices. Again, my dad's kind of the same way. The fact he's got an LG G2, yeah, it's paid off. I would say his only gripe with it really is the fact that maybe the battery's not lasting as long. Right. But it's a sealed device, and it's not easy to just swap the battery out in that thing for him. Mm Mm-hmm. So that would be one of the main reasons why you probably want to upgrade. It's like, eh, I'd really like to have a battery that lasts longer than five or six hours. <laughs> Just don't get Even the G4. Like, like, like use, yeah. So I'm glad to see that they just keep doing this. And it kind of sometimes makes me wonder, though, because my use cases are a little bit different than everybody, or the majority of people. You know, we're, I like playing some games on mine and... Obviously, we all want great battery. We want high-end cameras. So I don't know if a device that would be running one of these would be good enough for me. But then again, maybe I could just change my priorities and be like, yeah, I don't really need all that stuff. I just need it to social media and some email, some texting, and some calling, and I'm good to go. I mean, if they could squeeze in an awesome camera in mm-hmm. a mid-range device, it would that, yeah. that would be what I needed because I survived on a I think it was a 620 or 625 in the HTC A9 or A10 I think it was the A9. HTC iPhone basically yes. <laughs> and uh, you know, it wasn't that bad really I mean everything worked fine for what I needed it for and other than the camera being kind of subpar but that was to be expected of a mid-range phone mm-hmm. yeah if they could put like some of the latest camera technology into a smartphone that's running a mid-level CPU, I don't see. I think it would probably sell really well, and mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily sure that's where companies want because that's not where the profit margins are really made. Well, and then you got to figure you put in the expensive camera, then the price goes up. So yeah, the price goes up some, but not to the level of the highest end where it's got all the bells and whistles. Yeah, I don't know. It's a fine line to walk. Yeah, it is. Again, we're not in the that business world, so it's not up to us to make investors happy or disappoint Thank them. God. <laughs> <laughs> 
So these are supposed to be coming out to devices as early as this coming June. So that's just a few weeks away from the time that we record this. And um, looking forward to it. Curious to see what they'll be doing. Because right now it's the Snapdragon 835, I believe, is the the biggest one mm-hmm. out there. for In the new Samsung Galaxy S8. Yeah. Courtesy of Verizon for us. Thank you, Verizon. Yes, thank you for letting us try that out. And just real quick, kind of moving on with the whole Samsung and the Gear VR stuff at Six Flags. It keeps getting pushed back because of weather, unfortunately, here it's in St. Louis. kind like, of funny. <laughs> you know, talking with Laura, like, okay, so with the forecast for the day again, two weeks in a row now that you've wanted to have us come out to try out this new ride and this new Gear VR experience it's forecasting rain she's like yeah we can't do anything when it's rain i don't know why it keeps doing this to us so they're doing a combination media day for us and other people to come out to check this stuff out and try out that new spin sanity ride and i looked at the video for it i'm like ooh, i don't know if i need to be getting on that thing Uh uh-oh because as i get older some of the motion sickness stuff affects me a little bit more than it used to i've never really been a big spinny person hmm. so did you ever know. ride tom's twister as a kid once yeah and never again no never again huh and uh i remember that was one of the first things that we rode that one day and i th- almost thought i was gonna have to leave just because man, oh, wow. i was nauseous for a few hours wow at the point i didn't ride anything else because it didn't get but man i got off that thing i'm like i need to sit down for a while and just Give me a little time. I'll be okay. For our listeners who don't know, essentially they put you in this kind of vertical dryer tumbler-looking deal, yeah, and they like spin you really fast where you can stick to the wall if you bring because, your feet off the wall. Because then the floor drops, so you are just completely stuck to the wall. Ah, uh, that's interesting because when I was a kid, they stopped dropping the floor. Really? Yeah. So, hmm. huh. Interesting wonder if it just broke or it was a well, safety it, thing. Or? It hardly ever ran whenever I was Right. Younger. It was always down. Yeah. yeah. It was not one of those rides that uh, – well, I think it was one of their more original. It was an older ride. Oh, yeah. Definitely an older ride. <laughs> and I didn't ride it until like the late 80s. So you probably were really young when you rode it because uh, I was in my early teens when I rode it. I think it was like eighth grade. It's like early 2000s. Oh, wow. Into maybe late 90s. I was say it had to be late 90s. There. Yeah, I guess it was late 90s. Anyway, yeah, that's a thing. I don't remember exactly when they shut that down, but yeah, it was weird. So we'll try this thing out. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Might be a game time decision. Be like, yeah, I don't know about this. Definitely depend on what else I got going on that day. So I think that's my son's graduation day, the 23rd. We'll see. <laughs> Last thing we would like to talk about is the popular navigation application on most people's smartphones is Waze, mm-hmm. which is, I believe, it's a Google slash Alphabet owned property these days. It has now been updated with new voice recorder features that will allow you to record your own turn by turn audio. So if you want to help guide your significant other in the directions that they need to, turn you can record turn left here or whatever you want to say hmm. i would record video game characters there you go that would be fun that would be kind of be fun you get creative i mean they will oftentimes have different celebrities or impersonating right. voices record different people's voices i think right now you've got owen wilson is available mr t is available I can't think of who else might be available at the moment. Mm-hmm. But in the past, they've had Morgan Freeman and Shaquille O'Neal. And I can imagine turning the wrong way and hearing Marcus from Gears of War, Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, kind of like needing to reroute or whatever. Uh-huh. Re- rerouting. Oh, come on! <laughs> that would actually be funny. But it's interesting to know that they're doing this and now giving you the opportunity to record your own voices and tones and turn-by-turn navigation oh man i wonder if they could do a thing where you could have you could download other people's 
turn by turn. Like have right. a store. Yeah, like I could download yours or yeah, it's like person. a video game mashup or just uh, you know people from this movie or uh, your friend just does really good uh, voice, voice and, work. Yeah. yeah, voice work and you could download their kind of clips and put them into your app and use their stuff. I, that would that would be cool. That's another possibility for something like this. So, yeah, you can record your own voice directions and guide you on the road. In your way settings, just simply tap sound and voice to access voice recorder and get your kids and friends to record a favorite voice style. And I believe the update is live for both iOS and Android devices. Mm-hmm. I would imagine that it went up on both. So try it out and uh, let us know what you think if you're going to be doing something like that. I'm curious. I don't know if I would do that, but that's just me. I don't really use a whole lot of turn-by-turn GPS navigational applications. I love Waze. Waze is fantastic. When I do, I usually use Google Maps. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, Google Maps works great. Google Maps works great as well. <laughs> All right, so this week we kind of have a little bit of a weekend rant. I don't know how much I'm going to be ranting about this because there's a lot that I still need to read and learn about this. It will be relatively short simply because John Oliver has already covered it. So if you really want the lowdown, go watch his show. It's And he's a funny guy, I think. Some people tend to disagree for many reasons, but I think he's hilarious. So essentially he told his viewers to – well, talk to the FCC about net neutrality because apparently we're in the stage where we're going to revisit this again and we're going to make make it to where companies don't really have to abide by the same rules that we're abiding by to make the net truly neutral, hence net neutrality. I don't like that because that affects everything that I currently do. Whether it be this podcast, whether it be working for Microsoft, whether it be watching Netflix on my couch at home, or YouTube videos or the like, or even playing video games. It affects everything I do. I don't like that at all. In fact, I don't like that so much so that I'm going to give you a website to where you should give your own views and why you think we should stay net neutral. Now, this was created by John Oliver and his show, and it's called Go FCC Yourself, which is great. And essentially, once you pull up that link, which I'm going to do here because I have it in the show notes as well. You click on – that's on the right-hand side under proceedings. It has the file number. Now, this was a really convoluted thing that they they made real hard to get to understandably this time because, you know, they want to control everything on – that comes through uh, the US as if we were China or North Korea apparently. That's not the case. This is the United States and this should be a free enterprise state. So just saying. Um, You should go and file under Express Settings, so click the Plus Express. You fill out your name, your email contact, your address to make sure you're a real person because right now I believe there is a um, anti-net neutrality bot that is filling out a bunch of garbage, which is a bunch of people who are either dead or something of that nature. So how that gets filed into proceedings as like real evidence is kind of bullshit if you ask me but whatever we're um a free people and we have our own decisions to make and i feel that this is important enough to share on the show and this isn't you know a a republican problem this isn't a democrat problem this is an american people problem that threatens everything that we do if you work for a tech company This is a problem. If you watch YouTube, this is a problem. If you play video games, this is a problem. So I challenge you to go to FCC, you know, dot gov or just simply follow the link that I just gave earlier, which is go FCC yourself. Right. I mean, that takes you right to 17-108, which is the Restoring Internet Freedom proceeding. Yeah, and the express document is – honestly the best way to go um i haven't fooled around with any other thing because i just wanted to get my voice out there and say my piece as a real person and not a bot trying to 
ruin what good things we have going for us on the internet right now. Right. Now, the big carriers, go figure, have come out with videos saying, oh, we're not going to limit you. Everything's going to be all better. It's like, no, I don't trust you. I'm, I'm not sure if I ever will. So we're going to keep this free and open because that's the way it should be. Mm-hmm. That's about it. That's about <laughs> it. Yeah. So if you are curious to learn more, I really, really do suggest – actually, I'll put it in the show notes of – a John Oliver segment. Now, sure, you know, maybe he pokes fun at the bear a little too much, you could say. Yeah. But there is some good information in there. It's a good place so to start. It's a good place to start. Yeah, then you can kind of go off and find some reputable websites that's got some yep. good information and learn more. You know, the funny thing about journalism, God. never just take one place's uh, word, you know, word for it. For gospel. For gospel. Um that's kind of how journalism works. You work your multiple sources and you do your own investigation. And as you, you know, check the sources out, you come to realize, hey. A lot of consistency with this point as opposed to, see, this point only one source mentioned. And, and you could kind of gather your own thing to under, you know, better understand what is right for you. But I'm telling you now that unless you are a you know, big wig at one of these companies that wants to kind of shut down pipelines and make it to where you have to pay extra to get faster internet. You need to say something because as you saw in the last election, if you don't say something, other things will happen and take place for that. Regardless of, you know, again, regardless of what side you are on, you know, that was a real thing. There you go. Next up, it's time for our app entertainment and hardware picks. And apologies to Daryl. This will be the second week in a row. We're not going to mention the latest ones, but he did, based on our recommendation, start watching People vs. O.J. Simpson. Aha! Yes. What does he think? And he agreed that it's very fantastic that John Travolta and David Schwimmer both play the roles of Robert Shapiro and Robert Kardashian, respectively, yeah. very well. It's, it's, it's good. It's really, really good. But, yes, we will talk about Daryl's suggestions next week. I just want to take a chance to get a chance to watch and look into the stuff. And That's fair. Before I like, really talk about that. Speaking of finally getting to watch something and wanting to talk about it, mm-hmm. I watched The Mars Generation, which is a Netflix documentary, so really easy to find. And it has people, oh, you know, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye, Elon Musk in there talking about things that we need to do and consider. And if we don't, this generation that we're now calling the Mars generation, where in 10 to 15 years, they will be the first people to set foot on another planet. It may never happen. So we kind of need to act now. We kind of need to inspire great minds now and get that kind of ball rolling. I have come to find out too, especially, you know, watching something like this, that I really love watching young kids' minds light up with like the engagement of of the scientific community, for instance, of all of the possibilities that we could do. Just seeing their minds light up about that is enough to keep me going in the day. That is, (laughs) that's awesome. I love seeing that on their face. And you kind of see the same thing when they see kind of in quotations, their hero at Disneyland or something. Oh, yeah. That is one of the greatest feelings is watching that. So help this younger generation get to their dreams, you know, don't tell them that there's, you know, Oh, you can't do that. Tell them they can, because maybe one day there will be two Elon Musk's or three Mm -hmm. and our world would be a lot better off. But Mars generation basically centers around a bunch of aspiring teens wanting to be astronauts and they go through a space camp and I liked it. It wasn't exactly what I was hoping it to be, but there was some, kind of neat information in there and actually it was kind of funny my wife did not realize how far elon has come with his reusable rockets she was completely oblivious to the fact how good they're getting Mm -hmm. and she thought that was really interesting so 
hour and 37 minutes. So yeah, it's, it's not, not really a, a long watch. No, it's not much of your time. And I mean, if you just don't have anything to watch, just give it a shot. You can always turn it off, you know. But it's free if you got Netflix. Yep. Which uh, most of us do, really. It seems to be that way. Yeah. I mean, you don't have Netflix, people kind of give you a stink eye, like, what? It used to be how I would tell people, oh, I don't have TV, I have Netflix. Exactly. And they'd be like, what do you, you don't have, you, wait, you don't have a TV? No, I don't have, like, dash cable. TV, as in cable, yeah. as in, um, I don't pay monthly for my television service over the air. Right, yeah, it's more of a, I pay monthly for a, um, a little subscription to watch everything. Yeah, all at once, whenever I want. Right. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Not much at all, if you ask me. Works out really good. So the next thing that I want to talk about is kind of going back to the neighborhood, which we're talking about it's Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Day in the neighborhood. Exactly. And this I saw yesterday. This is going to be something that's going to be on Twitch starting May the 15th. Oh, Monday, the day I start Microsoft. Yeah. So it starts at 12 p.m. Pacific time on May the 15th, and Twitch is going to stream all 886 episodes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Man, couldn't squeeze in two more, could they? No. So starting off with the black and white episodes all the way up until like 2000 and whatever that the series finally came to a close, back to back to back. (laughs) Some of these episodes you can watch like on Amazon Prime, and I think even Netflix has some episodes on there. But some of these episodes have only aired that original time. They haven't been included in any sets or anything like that. But, you know, it's kind of tough when you got 886 episodes to fit them all into a a set. Yeah. Which, honestly, if they ever did release that, even though, yes, I'm 41, yes, my youngest son is 18, getting ready to graduate high school. I would probably still buy this thing. Oh, yeah. I definitely remember growing up watching Mr. Rogers. I mean, he was kind of, in some ways, one of the original video guys that sort of inspired kids to just imagine. Mm -hmm. We need more of those people in the world, like I was talking about earlier with the Mars generation. You have to inspire kids at an early age, otherwise you don't have much to work with later. I mean, the neighborhood of make-believe was kind of, Nah, that's where sure, it's a little things, corny, a little silly. That's where but... things kind of get go off the rails. But whenever he goes on these little field trips and stuff like that, right. to, you're like, oh, yeah, nah, this is what I'm talking about. Yep. Because, I mean, that was one of the first places I seen an electric car that ran on, like, car ba- a bunch of batteries. Yeah. yeah that's pretty cool. I, we've talked about that on an episode way back. We mentioned that. There was an episode that, you know, he drove an electric car <laughs> so far ahead of its time exactly but this is pretty neat so it's coming up really soon and uh, catch as much as you want you can just go to twitch.tv slash mr rogers and that's mr as m-i-s-t-e-r so watch that 886 episodes check it out it's a great thing beautiful day in the neighborhood it's <laughs> like to say won't you be my neighbor Um, I also had, again, the Go FCC yourself in the show notes. So I will have that. It's perfect. Um, I'll have that in the show notes. But the last thing I did want to talk about this, a real thing that you can go check out and has nothing to do with politics, is This Is Dan Bell on YouTube. Now, what Dan Bell does is he goes to old abandoned malls motels and uh, stores that are shutting down such as um, like our Crystwood Mall and stuff like that. Yes, exactly. Recently knocked that down for demolition and stuff. And he'll go in there and he will kind of record and sometimes play a little ominous music and sometimes give you a little history if he knows any of it. And it is creepy as hell. You know those ghost... Um, shows where they oh did you hear that you know, um, what, what, the ghost hunter guys mm-hmm. it this is what that should have been because the ghost hunter guys I, I don't take serious this guy is pretty legit this guy should almost be making like horror films actually 
It, it gets kind of creepy at times, but it is fascinating to watch things that you would see normally in a more decayed and chaotic form. And again, you know, some of these places he goes alone and it just gets kind of creepy. And if you're into that weird kind of thing, as I am and my wife is, you might enjoy these video, uh, videos. Uh, specifically, oh, I don't know where it's at, but there is a kind of love hotel. <laughs> well. And it is creepy. And there is huh. also a um, alone at 3 a.m. in the Haunted Hilltop House Hotel or something like that. Uh Definitely go check out that. Uh, there's, I think he does a separate series called Dead Motel Series, but it's all under his name, um, which is This Is Dan Bell. So mm-hmm. check that out. It's on yeah, YouTube. It's definitely going to be something I'm going to watch because if you do a YouTube search for Crestwood Plaza or Crestwood Mall, you will actually see you know, the mall that I spent a lot of my teenage years at. Uh huh. Because it was just in a state of not necessarily decay, but they shut it down, and it was multiple years before they started tearing it down. Which I think at this point now, there's just very little of it left that they haven't got knocked down. It won't be the last one either, because just watching the series, it kind of makes you think, "Oh man, are South County malls sort of becoming this?" Yeah, malls are malls are going changing. away quickly because we built them too fast, mm-hmm. and we had too many of them. Whereas now maybe you'll kind of have your central hubs of malls and people will go to them and they will get busy during Christmas time. But most of the people just shop online anymore. They don't want to deal with the crowds. Like and I the, can't blame them. It's like the Galleria Mall here in St. Louis where we have an Apple store and the Microsoft store. At It's very busy. It, Thankfully. <laughs> yeah. It's a very, very busy store and it's in a very nice neighborhood. A lot of overall. the stores there – are stores that you you can't just go any el- anywhere else in St. Louis. That is the only place for a Microsoft mm-hmm. store in in St. Louis currently. Right. I'm sure you know if they needed to, they could build a standalone store outside of the mall if that were ever you know come to you know be. But right. no, it's it's a great little spot, really nice facility. Mm-hmm. Next up, beer pick of the week. Brad, what you got for us today? Well, it's kind of a fruit beer, and I say that only because it has a fruit in it, but... (laughs) (laughs) But it's also got bread in it. It does, and by that I mean Wells Banana Bread Beer from Charles Wells Brewery. I love banana bread. I do too. I I love it. I really love banana bread, and I don't typically like fruit beers too much, but when you put banana and bread in the same sentence it's not quite the same right um this is 5.2 abv with 18 ibus very very low on the ibu count um apparently i'm not signed in to check out what i was talking about when i was uh you know checked it in but it is a silky crisp and rich amber colored ale with a fluffy head and a strong banana note on the nose and that just sounds awesome I really think this is a beer that you can enjoy any time of the year, mm-hmm. being as we're sort of in the transition between spring and summer. I felt that this would be a good one to share. I have had this once, and maybe it's just I need to make sure I have something fresh. I don't recall it being <clears throat> something that really stood out to me. It's not that sort of amazing you know, beer that, like you said, really stood out, but it is different enough that I would like to recommend it because I do see it occasionally and I'm like, I need to have that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, I've had it once, but I apparently didn't check it in on on tap. So I would imagine I probably gave it like a three to three and a half. I gave it a four and typically anything that is kind of amber in color. I just love Mm -hmm. uh, Oktoberfest, pale ales, you name it. If it's amber, I'm I'm loving it. So, all right. So definitely check this out. I know it's available in a wide variety of areas. So I yes, know we can get it definitely. in St. Louis. You can definitely get it in other places as well. 
So that does it for this week's episode. We hope you have enjoyed it. Please let us know what you thought. You can send us an email, contact at thetechinformist.com. You can also reach out to us on Twitter, at Kevin Arvell and at Holy underscore Shadows. Bingo. All right, because I noticed someone had tagged you on Instagram the other day as, oh, I'm doing something something with holy sh- with at holy shadows on instagram i'm like yeah it's not his thing and then it sees where you liked it but it's holy underscore shadow i'm like yeah you tagged the wrong person hmm. you can only imagine what the, the guy that has that i think he's out in california somewhere and he's actually some i don't know how how active he is but he posts little videos and stuff i looked into his account got my brand that's right the heck? Got, got that brand <laughs> i need to take all forms of holy shadows everywhere so i don't have that problem right holy <laughs> shadows holy underscore shadows holy yeah everything over and over again so let us know shoot us over some things that you would like us to check out for the app entertainment hardware picks and let us know other kinds of stories you would like us to possibly talk about or if you would like us to talk about themed episodes things like that we'd love to hear feedback from you and get emails from people other than Daryl and a few other folks that like to send in things. Yeah, and I know I did just start working not quite at Microsoft, but I'm <laughs> about to. Um, and the past two weeks have been Microsoft stuff. That was kind of a coincidence. I'm sure next week will be completely different unless... Right, because build will be done and over with. Right. And there'll be the next things getting ready to take over the news cycle. Like what's getting ready to happen at E3 and stuff like that. And you have um, Apple's thing coming up. You have the Google thing coming up, Google I.O. Yep. So that's all got plenty of real soon. Yeah. Got plenty of cross platform stuff to talk about. Yes. All right. Thank you all for listening. And again, have a great rest of the day great weekend and spend some time with your mom this mother's day as well make sure to at least give her a phone call at the very very least give her a phone call so until we talk next time consider yourself informed we're out of here bye bye neighbor